I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorham, Maine. This is a nice card table. It's mahogany, solid mahogany. Uh, card table means the uh, rear leg swings out and the top opens. I don't think this is a period antique. I think it's an old reproduction. We'll look underneath and see, get a better idea. And the, well, the only thing that's wrong with it is this leg's been broken clean off. And so we need to repair it. So you can see that the, the table is an old table, but how old? The, these, these boards are all, this is a big solid board on the sides and the front. Then it was cut out, it looks like, and veneered. That's the period pieces I've worked on. This is usually bricked up work, usually not solid wood. Uh, a little bit differently. You can see that these places for the screws are cut out by hand. I think this is probably built... Uh, probably about 100 years ago, the first part of the 20th century. So it's a very, very nice old reproduction. The first thing I want to consider here is when I glue this leg up, where is this point, where is that going to end up? Conveniently, these legs uh, have the original holes in them from the turning. Now I'm going to measure this diagonal. I've got to assume that this diagonal is correct. We all know what happens when you assume, but I don't have anything else to go by. 35 and a quarter. I've got a nice uh, piece of scrap wood here, and I'm going to drill two holes in it, exactly 35 and a quarter. Okay, that worked out well. So now I can transfer this to our broken leg here. That's great for the diagonal, but obviously the leg can still move. I need to do one front to back. All right, now we try it on the broken leg seems to be holding the broken leg uh, right where it should be. Now we can take the tape off and see what we got going there. Ah, interesting. It's been repaired before. There's a screw here. And we're missing a piece of wood there. This really shows the whole problem. When you drill in to dowel something like that, you create all these weak spots around the dowel you've drilled into. And with all the leverage on this leg, it pretty easily just busted this out. So what are your options here? I mean, I could turn an entirely new section here, but then I'd have to turn a dowel onto that, drill into the next section, put it in, and I still have to drill this out, put this in. It wouldn't be really accomplishing that much. I mean, technically, what you need here is an entirely new leg, and we're not going to do that. So I think that I'm just going to epoxy this whole thing back together, uh, and We'll see how that works. We really have nothing to lose by doing that. In fact, we only have to gain, which is keeping this leg original.
Well, I think uh, this went pretty well. We'll find out tomorrow when I take the clamps off. And I, but I feel confident that this leg is in the right place. Uh, certainly, you know, just eyeballing it, it seems fine. And uh, we'll find out tomorrow. All right, let's see. This leg is rock solid. Here's that place where that wood was missing. Typically, with this much missing wood, I would piece in another piece of wood. But I think that trying to cut, chisel into this leg is only going to be detrimental. It was so shattered. I think I'm just going to have to fill it with epoxy putty. This epoxy putty dries really hard and so it's important to do some basic shaping and get some of your details as much as you can before it hardens. You have seven to ten minutes. That's why I use the timer. So while I'm waiting for the putty to fully harden, I can start sanding. I'm going to sand off this uh, thin coating of epoxy here. I'm going to end up sanding this whole section from here to here. All right, a couple hours went by. Now I can start sanding the putty. This is just a little regular wood putty. It's really tough to get this little this little edge here. I can, you know, I look at it this way. I can see this line coming around here. I'm getting closer and closer. You know, and I, and I look across here at this line. I can see exactly what I'm trying to achieve. And I just keep working at it a little at a time. I think that's as far as I'm going to go uh, for now until I turn this uh, table back upright. Now I'm going to sand with uh, 150 and then 220. All right, all sanded. Now I'm going to tape it off. Now I'm going to seal it with uh, shellac uh, using an aerosol. Okay, and I'll give this another coat this evening 
All right, this is dried overnight. I'm going to sand it uh, very lightly, most of these flats with 500, and then I'm going to go over it with a, a gray pad. It's very important I don't cut through this shellac to the bare wood. I'm going to touch up these uh, smaller areas with a marker. That's the place where that screw was that I just left in there. This larger area over here, I'll use some dye stain on. All right, now I'm going to spray uh, this whole area with uh, aerosol black. Now I'll go over it with the little uh, beeswax oil polish. All right. You know, my appreciation for this table has grown quite a bit working on it. Uh, everything about it is just exquisite. The turnings, these legs, are absolutely gorgeous. I feel that I made the right decision in saving this section here. Uh, as I was working on it, I realized that this mahogany is quite special. It's probably Cuban mahogany. I could see little white lime flakes in the grain. And there's no way I could have re replaced that with the same wood. It seems really good and strong. And I think it looks pretty good. I hope you liked the video, and if you did, please subscribe and like, and be sure to hit the bell icon so that you'll be notified when I put out a new video.